Hi there, it's Laura here from Get Organized HQ, and this is one of the more unique videos that I have recorded in a long time. This is 10 Habits of Unorganized People. And before you hop away, know that I am not one who typically addresses negative topics, and I think you're going to find this one actually to be rather uplifting and encouraging. A few weeks ago, Tasha recorded a video here on our channel, The 10 Habits of Organized People, and I'll put a link to where you can check that out if you're interested in that. And so I thought it would be really fun to do a counterpart to Habits of Unorganized People. But I want to mention, first of all, I don't even really like the term unorganized people because I think that our state of organization in our lives and our spaces isn't necessarily part of who we are. So just because at any given point in time, your space may be completely organized or completely disorganized, that does not make you in and of yourself a disorganized person. And I actually talk about that later in the video. So I just want that to be known. This is not to label people, it's just to give us a good way to talk about it and to have a nice ring with her video. I also wanna mention, this is not to make you feel bad. These are things I have done every single one of these things. Some of them I struggle with a little bit more than others, so I don't have it all figured out. We are all in this together, working to get more organized. Also by way of disclaimer, I want to say that not every single disorganized person does all of these things. This is just something to get you thinking. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Many disorganized people are really hard workers. I know sometimes disorganization gets a bad rap and people might assume that someone's home is disorganized because they're lazy. But actually, in my experience, that is usually not the case at all. Some of the less organized people I know are actually some of the hardest workers. And that's because a lot of times when we're less organized, we have to work harder because we're not necessarily working smarter. And also, when we have this trait of getting really focused on a task and working really hard, whether that's work or a sport or whatever that may be, a hobby, something like that, we get so focused on that that it's hard to even notice or make time for those little mundane day-to-day -day things that are, will keep our spaces tidy. So that's why often people are a little bit more disorganized. And there is no magic cure to this, but simply being aware of it and trying to make sure you set aside a little bit of time to really pay attention to those day-to-day -day tasks and make sure you've got a time to do that. If you're someone who gets really focused on whatever you're working on and tends to not notice everything else. This is one I am probably most guilty of and many unorganized people say yes way too much. The default mode is just, yes, I can do that. Yes, I'd love to do that. Yes, I'll do that. A lot of them actually get a lot done because it's hard to say no. And there's, again, not a magic solution to this, but pay attention to what you're saying when an opportunity comes up, whether it's someone literally asking you to do something or it's just something that you notice that you'd like to do. Take a second, stop before you commit to it or before you say yes and try to just be aware of what you're doing and think about it and ask yourself, do I really have time to fit this in? Is this something that's really a priority right now in my life? This one really might surprise you, but many unorganized people are perfectionists. And you might think, well, if you're a perfectionist, doesn't that mean that you live in a perfectly tidy house with a perfect routine and schedule? And that is actually not the case. Perfectionism is often the enemy of getting things done because we're so caught up in the thing that we're doing and making it perfect that we get far less done. And let me give you an example. So if you go to clean your bathroom and this is something we all need to do, but you know, nobody, as far as I know, actually loves this task and you think I've got to do an amazing job. And so you're doing it with gusto. You're doing it as 
thoroughly as you possibly can. You're doing it to the best of your ability. You're getting off a toothbrush and getting in all those little lines and all that stuff. It's going to A, be even less pleasant because you're working extra hard and it's going to take you probably three times as long as a quick cleaning would. And so then not only has it literally taken you longer so you couldn't get as much cleaning done, but it's going to make you less likely to get it done the next time you need to do it because you remember like, wow, this is a big task. It takes a long time, it's hard. Instead, here's what I like to say to myself and this has helped me so much. I say when I begin a task, that is not something that needs to be done perfectly, which is most tasks, by the way, I say, I'm going to make this 70% better. So my goal when I clean the bathroom is not a perfectly spotless bathroom. It is a 70% cleaner bathroom. And you might think that takes 70% of the time. Not true. It takes about a third of the time or less. So try that. Try making sure you realize what's important and what's not. And if you do things to about a 70% level, you'll be able to do three times as many things. It will be easier and there'll be less angst because you're not going to be putting all of this pressure on yourself to make it absolutely perfect. Many unorganized people are indecisive. One of the chief causes of clutter is indecision. And actually clutter is just postponed decisions. So when you see an item and it doesn't have a home and you're not sure what to do with it, instead of setting it on the counter or another flat surface or somewhere you know isn't its home, go ahead and make that decision. A, do I wanna keep it or do I wanna let it go? And if I wanna keep it, where's its permanent home gonna be? It's just so easy for us to just keep putting off those decisions because we don't want to commit. And many of the decisions are not all that important. Now, if you're making a really vitally important decision, then yes, please take more time. But most of our day-to-day -day decisions, even something as simple as, should I clean this bathroom or that bathroom? Or should I have pasta or fish for dinner? Something like that. Don't stress about them. Work on making those decisions more quickly and you will get so much more done. Many unorganized people have way too many lists. And you may think, aren't list makers really, really organized? Not always. Because when you make all sorts of lists for everything and you've got some on your phone and some on your computer and some in your car and some in your planner and some in various notepads and some on sticky notes all over the place, it actually leads to more clutter more lists and more things that you don't really have time to go back to, or maybe you can't even find them. So instead of making a list for everything and starting a new one, come up with one central location for your list, possibly two if you want something physical and digital. So like you could use your planner or one notepad and your notes app on your phone. And anytime you need to make a list, put it there and make sure before you start a new list that you don't already have one. I will tell you many times I have created a list only to realize that I made one six months ago and six months before that. So making fewer lists and putting them in one central location is going to help you complete them and reference them. Many unorganized people speak harshly to themselves. So when you walk in one of your spaces and you see a mess, what is going on in your head? What is it that you're thinking to yourself? Are you thinking, oh, what a mess, I cannot believe I am such a slob, how frustrating. Or, on the contrary, are you thinking what you might say if you saw a mess in a friend's house? So if you walked in to your friend's house and saw a big mess, I am hoping <laughs> that you wouldn't say, well, friend, you're just such a slob. I don't understand how you live like this. I would never say that and I hope you would. Instead, you would be kind to your friend and you would think, well, I know you have a lot going on. You're busy working at a lot of important things. Can I maybe help you? That's what you would do. And that's what you need to say to yourself. When you see your own messes, stop and think, what would I say to a friend? You wouldn't berate them. You wouldn't call them sloppy or slobs or hopeless or anything like that. You would recognize that they're a person, there's a lot going on, and they're not intrinsically disorganized or intrinsically slobs. Instead, you just need a little bit of help 
getting organized and getting back on the wrong tra right track, not wrong track, getting back on the right track. So make sure that you're paying attention to that internal dialogue and what you're saying to yourself. And if you flip the script every time you want to say something negative, every time you want to say something that indicates that you just are a slob or a sloppy person or don't know how to get organized, flip that around and say, I'm just having a hard time with this right now, but I can get organized. And that alone is going to help you so much because when you believe that you're a generally organized person and you're just struggling in one or two areas, it is going to help you so much. You're going to start naturally doing those things. And also it's just a better way to live. Many disorganized people are clutter blind. So that means that you don't actually even see or notice or register the clutter and disorganization around you. So if I took my usually perfectly clean, tidy space, and I suddenly threw a whole bunch of clutter in there, I would walk in and I would notice it right away. It's usually clean and tidy. Versus if I gradually have a stack of papers here and then one little thing in the corner that I haven't put away and then something else and something else and then over time it starts to grow and then I'm just used to seeing all the clutter. I don't even notice it and when one or two things get added to it, they don't even show up on my radar. And that's how easy it is for things to quickly get out of control when you're blind to the clutter. So try clearing off a space completely, even if you have to like put it all in a laundry basket or something, and then take notice of what happens if somebody puts some clutter back there. I think you're gonna notice it so much more. Many disorganized people view habits and routines and plans as restrictive rather than freeing. And I completely understand why that is. It seems like, well, if I set up a routine and I have to do this set of things every day, it's mundane, it's boring. I don't even want to tell myself what to do. And so it doesn't sound freeing, but actually when you think about it, it's incredibly freeing to set up routines because these are things that we all have to do, like washing our clothes. I could avoid setting up a routine for washing my clothes, but they're not going to wash themselves. I'm still going to have to do it. And if I don't have a routine, it's going to now cause me stress because when am I going to fit it in? I'm not really sure when I'm doing it. And here's another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about routines is it gives you back a lot of time because you're going to spend, yes, a few minutes, maybe each evening and each morning focusing on some of those routine tasks, but the rest of the time is yours to enjoy guilt-free and that's huge for me when i know that i've got things under control um if i'm relaxing i don't need to be feeling guilty about it that is so just such an amazing feeling and i want that for you one other incredibly freeing thing about routines is that once you have a solid one established it's okay if you skip a day actually no one's gonna notice so if you're doing a load of laundry every day and you just have a day for whatever reason that you really want to skip it, it's not even going to matter. Versus if you don't have any kind of routine and you're waiting all the way until you're not going to have any clean clothes left to wear, and then you're kind of going to be forced to do it whenever it needs to be done instead of having that flexibility of a really solid routine, then you can skip a day here or there and it's not even going to make that much of a difference. Many disorganized people don't really enjoy the process of getting organized. And you might be thinking, well, of course, who does? But imagine I can wave a magic wand and your house would suddenly be completely tidy and organized. That sounds amazing, right? But even if I could do that, it wouldn't stay that way because the process itself of getting decluttered and organized is going to help you set up habits and ingrain those habits in you that are going to help you keep it that way. So there's a lot of value in the process, even if it's not exciting. And the more you can enjoy the process, the better it's going to be. Now, I know some of you, you're just never going to enjoy categorizing all of your stuff and putting pretty labels on it. First of all, you don't even have to put the pretty labels on it. But secondly, do what you can to help yourself enjoy it as much as you can. So put on some good music, your favorite podcast, listen to an audiobook, 
And even if you don't really thoroughly enjoy it, you can at least appreciate the process and realize that there's value in the process itself, not just in the end result. Many disorganized people really truly are organized in their own way. I think many times we fall into the trap of thinking that our spaces need to look like what we see on Instagram or Pinterest or need to look like someone else's version of an organized space in order to be truly organized. And that's just not the case at all. All your space needs to be organized is everything needs a home and you need to know where it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. So many people that you might not think of as super organized, they truly are. They're getting a lot done. Everything has a home. They know where it is and that's organized. So make sure you're not creating expectations for yourself that are unreasonable and unnecessary. And if you want to dive deeper into this topic, I have a video on the one question you need to ask yourself before you start organizing, go ahead and check that video out. I think you're gonna love it if you liked this video and I will see you with a new video next week.